Hello. Hello, everybody. It's noon in DC and so it's time for some ponderings from the purple parlor of my home. My name is Ginger Gaines Sorelli. I'm the senior pastor at Foundry United Methodist Church here in Washington, DC. And it is always uh, nice to get to hang out for a little bit and welcome some folks in for some unscripted ponderings, just things rolling around in my head and my heart. And um, Fiona is, is going to help. <laughs> She's very engaged in the process. <laughs> um, the sun is just coming out here. It's so nice. Um, and I'm just going to jump right on in. I am continuing to be mindful that after the last not only two years of pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, white supremacy and uh, race, racial violence, pandemic, climate change, political strife, um, all of these things and more, and being human and all the things that happen in our lives. Um, all of this is taking a toll, has taken a toll, we know this. And I'm mindful that um, various ones of us are going to be in various stages of depletion. Some of us will have figured out um, perhaps some ways to begin to try to address that. But I'm just aware that we're all running, I would say most of us, I shouldn't say all, that many if not most of us may be running on less than a full tank. <laughs> I maybe shouldn't use that that metaphor, considering that filling up the tank uh, of our vehicles right now is its own challenge. But I I'm I'm thinking about about how we need to pay attention when the well starts to run low, the well of our inner resources, the well of our um, well-being, really. And, you know, I think about it in a variety of ways. My creative well, my, you know, just my energy levels, my mm, motivation, my, you know, and really it's all of a piece. It's not, those things aren't all separate. They're connected. We are a unity, everything everything is connected. But what I want to do today is just to, to give us some space to ponder for a few minutes what, what are the things that are going to replenish the well for you. And uh, maybe you're feeling like 100% <laughs> and if that's the case, that's amazing. I'm so glad. What a gift that is. Um, I'm curious kind of where folks are on a scale from 1 to 10. You know, I have a colleague who with some regularity checks in with me and um, just asks me how I'm doing on a scale of 1 to 10. And I think about this in terms of like, where's the, how's the well? Is it full? Is it empty? And, you know, I would say right now I'm probably about, about, about a 5, which isn't bad considering everything. Um, so I, I, I'm mindful that right now so much of what we are taking in may not be nourishing, it may not be filling the well in ways that give us life and energy and motivation. What we're taking in, so much of the, the news and the trauma that surrounds um, surrounds us in so many different ways and then just the, the challenges um, that any of us may be facing at any given moment, um, the sort of things we're needing to take in may be depleting us more 
as opposed to filling us. And so what are those things that we can intentionally um, take into ourselves or give ourselves to begin to, to fill the well? What are the things that come to your mind that help renew your spirit, renew your sense of uh, your energy, uh, renew your sense of maybe hopefulness, your capacity to kind of take the next step. I am think about several things from our, our faith tradition. One of the things, um, I, I come back to this same scripture, and please forgive me if I've, if I've um, shared the scripture a gazillion times, and you're like, oh, here she goes again with that. Um, but the scripture from Philippians 4, it, I just think it's so important. And it goes, I've talked in um, a couple of weeks ago in the sermon, I was talking about perspective. And I just, I continue to think that, that our perspective, where we focus, how we frame things um, is so critically, critically important. And the, the verse that first came to my mind um, and that comes up again and again and again and again when all of I feel bombarded and I feel like I'm just um, imbibing all of this negative, painful, traumatic stuff. Then I go back to this verse um, from Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. It's this, and that's it. That's the verse. <laughs> um, we get to choose sometimes where we, we can choose where we focus. We can choose what we think about, at least to some degree. Um, we can try to put things into our mind. Even if, even if you know, some of us may struggle with um, runaway brain, um, kind of that get into anxious cycles or worry. Um, but if you think about that as like a, a, a wheel with spokes, um, then you can put something in there to kind of slow it down. So what do you put into your thinking, even if you are, you're having a busy kind of spinning mind? What can you put into your thinking that will help you shift or slow down a little bit and change your focus? We can think about what is beautiful, what is pure, what is true. Well, um, what are those things for you? Um, I, you know, I've written about that a bit in Sacred Resistance, various ways that we try to kind of keep ourselves from burning out. Um, and <laughs> one of the things that, um, that I just a practice to fill the well is what um, Fiona is modeling so beautifully for us today, um, which is rest and sleep. Um, I did not, I was not an Olympic sleeper last night. I think I slept maybe four hours, which was really pathetic. Um, and so when I woke up and my brain was going, uh, I sort of started thinking, okay, what can I put in there <laughs> that are things worth thinking about, things that um, will help me feel at least restful in my spirit, even if I can't get my body to go back to sleep. Um, so sleep and rest. Are you getting enough sleep and rest? Are you giving yourself permission to stop? Um, are you laughing enough? Are you finding things that, that fill you with delight? Um, laughter is very, very good medicine for the body and the spirit. Um, are, you, are you practicing um, things that keep you near beauty? And that can take all sorts of forms. Are you doing things that help you play? Um, I have, on occasion, recently had people ask me, well, what do you do? When do you play? What do you do for, for fun? <laughs> and I, there's always this long pause. Um, <laughs> hi, Fiona. 
Hi. Um, <laughs> and um, it's important to know what you're, what you're, what you do to, 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 to play, you know, to just be light and, uh, and have fun. So what are the things, what are the things that are come up, come up for you as you think about the things that fulfill and feed your spirit? One of the other things that, um, that I was reflecting on, because I went back and I was looking at some of what I had written, is, um, you know, for me, at the beginning of Lent, I announced in my homily on Ash Wednesday that spring couldn't arrive fast enough. And I'm, I'm just m mindful that, that the, the gift of the created world is one of those places that we can focus on and in so many ways, like Fiona, I mean, um, the creatures and, and, and the created world with its cycles um, and its seasons teach us and remind us of so many things. It's a place we can put our focus. And um, we can think about it. It's one of the reasons that I so, I love what they call the nature poets, a couple of my favorites, Mary Oliver and um, Wendell Berry. Uh, you have heard me quote, uh, if you have ever listened to me talk of anywhere. Um, <laughs> and it's because they do these deep meditations sort of drawing from the wisdom and the beauty of the created world. And um, there's so much for us there. We just look out the window or go out into creation. And for me anyway, that's one of the, one of the, one of the best ways for for me to to receive new energy and to feel like the well the inner well is getting um, getting filled and um, so I wanted to just I thought I would share a few reflections on this particular piece um, that I had written um, and just as a way to kind of focus us it it's, it, in D.C. right now, as I said, the, the sun just came out and, and it's starting to feel bright. Of course, spring is springing here and the cherry blossoms are everywhere and um, that's all lovely. Um, it's a few reflections. Um, life emerging in unexpected places always strikes me. For example, I delight at the sight of a tuft of grass or a single flower creeping up through a tiny crack in a sea of concrete pavement. For me, that very small thing points to a very large truth. The power of life, fueled by the love and presence of an endlessly creative God, is stubborn and determined. Life and love will always ultimately prevail. There are visions and reminders of this truth everywhere in creation. Psalm 19 captures this wisdom, saying the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. One of the things that consistently helps me regain a sense of balance, hope, and general well-being in the face of anxiety and stress is to be outside. To look at the trees, to listen to the birds, to walk barefoot on the grass. I really love to go barefoot. As much as I love shoes, some of you know I love shoes, but I love to go barefoot. Uh, to feel the breeze against my skin, to smell the scent of flowers or wet earth. It recalibrates my blood pressure to pet and play with the dogs and cat who share our home. Even, it's, even if it's with the aid of allergy medicine or a great picture window through which to take it in, my guess is that all of us can be fed and nourished by intentional engagement with earth, wind, fire, water, and all the plants and creatures and energies in this beautiful world. The animals and plants speak. They teach us things about life and about God. You never know when you will see or receive something that restores your hope, that calls you back to something more real than all the litigation and destruction so prevalent around us all. And then I share this poem by Wendell Berry. After the bitter nights and the gray cold days comes a bright afternoon. I go into the creek valley and there are the horses, the black and the white, lying in the warm shine on a bed of dry hay. They lie side by side, identically posed as a painter might imagine them. Heads up, ears and eyes alert, 
They are beautiful in the light and in the warmth, happy. Such harmonies are rare. This is not the way the world is. It is a possibility nonetheless deeply seated within the world. It is the way the world is sometimes. I'm just going to leave it right there. We never know when we're going to see something that reminds us of how the world can be, how the world should be. And in a time when things feel so uncertain in so many ways, dangerous and fraught, with so much anxiety and fear, it's important to intentionally focus on the things that are good and beautiful and true and just and pure. Like, you know, I mean, Harvey the dog is mischievous, but pure of heart. <laughs> it's important to, to perceive intentionally to, to look around and take in what is the way the world is to let it teach us the creation and to remind us of how it can be and should be. And there are these moments all the time if we pay attention. We all need to, to make sure we're doing things to fill the well um, I'll just mention uh, a colleague had a, a neighbor who uh, committed suicide just in the last couple of days and it's been a reminder to me that we get so depleted, we get so lost and people are going through so much. We, many of us, are going through so much. We don't always know. So um, this, is, this is an invitation for us to be mindful, to remember that people, you know, what, what we perceive is only what we perceive and we never know what's going on under the surface. And we also need to, to be mindful of what's going on under our own skin in our own being pay attention if you're if you're a one or a two on a scale from one to ten what do you need how do you need to be filled what do you what who can be with you in that place do you have the resources you need where where can you find some nourishment some encouragement how can you fill the well be encouraged and reminded that whether you're at a you know one or off the charts that that God and God's love and presence really is the wellspring that image that we carried with us that journeyed with us was a resource for us um, during our time of full quarantine as Foundry Church the wellspring of God's love and presence and grace is ever ever present and with us with you um, giving you the grace to, to, to receive what you need so I want to encourage all of us to be very very gentle with ourselves to find some sleep and rest to laugh as much as possible to practice the things that keep us close to beauty and meaning, truth, justice, things that are encouraging, hopeful, and to pay attention to this beautiful, beautiful world that God has given us to live in, this creation, to let it teach us, inspire us, and remind us of the way the world can be sometimes, and the way the world will be someday fully because God is with us and will see us through. 
that's what I got today. Um, may the peace of God be with you all. I um, hope, hope that you're doing well. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, for the beautiful gifts and the grace and your presence, the wellspring that, that is the source of all of our strength, we give you thanks for all of these beautiful gifts. I pray that you would be with everyone in the sound of my voice today who is feeling deeply depleted and like they just don't even know how to, to, to get what they need. God, I pray that, that you would make a way or that you would hold them in that place, that you would be with all of us in whatever shape we're in today, and that you would remind us to seek out and to focus on the beautiful gifts of your love and your grace and your creation and all of the, the many mercies and graces that fill our lives. Continue to guide us in your way. Help us to walk gently on the earth, gently with ourselves, gently with others, for we never know what's going on in the fullness of another's life. Help us to be more fully yours each and every day as we grow close to the end of this Lenten season. Prepare our hearts, body, spirits to fully enter into the joy of Easter. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being with me for a while today. I hope and pray that you will know in the core of your being the liberating power of God's love for you. And I will see you next time.